Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for blessing us to be in this place at this time. And God, we are looking unto you, the author and finish of our faith. We are trusting you to bless us with a word that will encourage us, give us illumination, strengthen us, and God, make us more determined. Father, we need you and we need your word. God, let me hide behind you and let you be seen and not me. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read this psalm because um, as I was, the Lord helped me put the word together, these, uh, this song came to my mind. And it goes, take time to be holy. Speak oft or often with the Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his blessings to seek. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide, and run not before him, whatever be tied. In joy or in sorrow, still follow the Lord, and look into Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love. Thou soon shall be fitted for service above. Hallelujah. And those words bless me so much because we are a society that's too busy. We don't take time for anything or hardly anybody anymore. And so the thought that the Lord has given me for today is don't take his presence lightly. Don't take his presence lightly. And this was uh, <laughs> a subject that I... Uh, I would have never thought about, actually. But since he gave it to me, I'm uh, working the best way I can. Y'all pray for me. This song conveys the thought that I want, excuse me, this song reflects the thought that I want to convey to all of us today. God said his presence, this is what he said, God said his presence always has purpose and is purposed. His presence always has purpose and is purposed. God said he is always working for the good of his people. He wanted us to know that. In spite of whatever's going on, He's always working for our good. He said his presence brings peace. And peace defined is, which is absent from strife, a state of rest, quietness, and calmness. Amen? And as you reflect on that, Sometimes we go in the presence of God and we're anxious. 
And sometimes we go in and we're talking to God and how many know we don't allow God to talk back to us? Y'all not guilty, I am. Sometimes. Not all the time. But sometimes we are so busy telling God what we need, what we don't have, uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know. But we don't steal ourselves in his presence enough to allow him to work in our spirits. Amen? He said when he, we would come in his presence, he give peace. And uh, an example of that is in uh, Exodus 33, 14, and I like to read that. And I like, uh, I hope y'all bear with me because I don't want to really be rushed, but it's uh, not very long. Okay. Exodus 33, 4, 14. It's about Moses. I'm going to start reading at verse um, 7. Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the Tabernacle of Meetings. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the Tabernacle of Meetings, which was outside the camp. So it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people rose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. When we come into the presence of the Lord, you know, we get still. And, and you can tell when the presence of the Lord comes because there's a brokenness that come over you. And when that presence come, God is wanting to minister to you. Amen. And so sometimes we have to steal ourselves and open wide our heart and spirit and allow God to commune with us. The thought is don't take the presence of God lightly. Okay, so here we find that Moses went to the tabernacle meetings and the people saw the pillar of clouds standing at the tabernacle door and all the people rose and worshiped each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. He wasn't behind a, uh, a curtain, but he spoke to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. He, his presence wasn't so intimidating that Moses couldn't talk to him. And God talked to him as a friend. And he, and he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. He waited around in the trenches of that glory. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, this is what uh, Moses is telling God what he said about him. He's reminding God what he said. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, not my way, not what I got in mind, but your way. You and uh, you, I'm sorry, a minute, that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation 
is your people. And he said, now I can imagine that Moses had this grave responsibility of taking the Israelites over out of Egypt into the promised land. And that's a, a, a lot of responsibility. You're talking about millions of people. Where they, how they going to eat, how we're going to get there, you know, all these things that was going on. And God said to him, my presence will go with you, my God, and I will give you rest. Rest in the Hebrew word means nuach. It means to settle down, to be soothed or quieted, to be secure, to be still. You know, the things we go through make us anxious, want to do something. But in this instance, when the presence of God came, he wanted, he gave him rest so he can be still. Huh? That he can make wise and sound decisions. That he can handle the responsibility of such a multitude. So God said, I'm going to give you my presence. And in my presence, I'm going to cause you to rest. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I can use some rest. Hallelujah. And I certainly could use the presence of the Lord. Because there's a lot, the Lord was beginning to tell me there's a lot of benefits. That's one example. The other thing God said, what his presence brings is instructions. How to, sometimes we have an idea, a clue of what to do but sometimes we don't know how to go about doing it. So when we come into the presence of the Lord and, and we steal ourselves before him and allow him to minister to us, he will give us instructions. He will show us the way, who to connect with, what not to do. He will give us instructions, and let me give you an example of that. Genesis 18. Okay. Okay, you remember the, the story of Abraham and how the angels came and visited him? Well, this is what this story is. Then the Lord appeared to him by the uh, Terembeth trees and of Mamre, and he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. In other words, come tabernacle with me. Come fellowship with me for a while. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts after that, you may pass by, and as much as you have come to your servant, they said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, nailed it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran, into, ran to the herb, took a tender and a good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, where is Sarah, 
your wife. So he said, here in the tent, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed in the age of childbearing. She had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after all this time, you coming now to tell me that I'm going to have a child? And I'm so old? Ain't no life in this flesh. And she laughed. She got tickled. She said, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure my Lord being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, and the Lord. Now see, these were his angels. But you hear what, what uh, and the word said, and the Lord said to Abraham. Why did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I surely bear a child since I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you and according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. <laughs> Amen. So the point here is that God's purpose brings instruction. His presence brings instruction. And his presence bring purpose. So God was going to make of a, a Abraham a father of many nations. And he was going to let it happen through Sarah's womb that was dead. But again, in the presence of the Lord, God gives instructions. He gives Peace, he gives instructions. Thirdly, God give favor. And I can attest to this because being in the presence earlier this week, I experienced favor. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't thinking about it. It happened. And I know it's because I had been in the presence of the Lord. And the first thing that happened to me, I went to the hairdresser, got my hair done, and uh, I wanted to put it on my charge, my, my charge my account, and I didn't have my card. So I was going to pay it by PayPal, and I couldn't do that. And so there was a young lady sitting under the dryer with tears in her eyes, and she said, I'm going to pay for your hair. I didn't really under, understand her at first, and I said, what you say? She said, I'm going to pay for hair. Now, I got the works this time. I got the works, so it wasn't cheap. <laughs> and so the young lady was crying, and the Lord afforded us the opportunity to minister healing to her heart. God. To God be the glory. But she sowed a seed. She did what Abraham did to the angels, made them a meal. Made them comfortable. But she sowed a seed. And it was a blessing. It was timely. Because I was trying to shift my funds around, you know. But God, being in his presence, he gives favor. The other thing he did was yesterday. No, it wasn't yesterday. It was Friday. Friday was my day. I went 
to pick up some uh, furniture from my, that was long overdue, but anyway, finally came, and I had to pick it up yesterday. And uh, got there, and I saw some items that were on sale. And I just happened to look, and I'm, my eyes fell on this item, and the item was $399. And when I looked at the tag, it said $30. You know I couldn't pass that by. I said, Lord, now that's favor. Lamont was with me, he can attest to it. That was favor. And uh, then I got a birthday present on top of that. So God is, he just, he'll blow you away. But I tell you, it's something about being in the presence of the Lord. Let's look at Psalm 34. Okay, right there. It's, the word says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Come on, saints, we got to make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. I got in his presence, and he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Amen. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Amen. Amen. So God, you know, he blesses us and he give us favor. Luke 1, 27 and 37. And we're going to, this is a Mary story. Luke 1, 27. Luke 1, 27. I want to hurry up with this. Okay. Now in the six months, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, to her. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. She didn't feel worthy, but she was chosen. Amen? God had purposed her life, so in his presence, he showed her favor. He granted her favor. She will be highly favored among women. Amen? So, when we come into the presence of the Lord, there is favor. And then the other thing, now God gave me this. I, I didn't have this. He gave it to me. He said, number four, wisdom. 
Let's look at Proverbs 4, 7. So there are a lot of benefits when we get in the presence of the Lord. And sometimes you get in the presence of the Lord, you just don't even have to say nothing. I'm sorry, Proverbs. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. Hallelujah. She's going to, wisdom going to promote you. All right. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear my son, receive my sins. And the years of your life will be many. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let them go. Keep her. For she is your life. So much just being in the presence of God. What God can do for us. Hallelujah. This is what he said he, that he want to do for us when we come in his presence. Number five, rest. To rest means to settle down, to be soothed and quieted, to be secure. Amen. And we discussed that when he gave us peace, he will also, when we get in his presence, he will give us rest. Rest from our labor. Rest from our struggles. Rest from our cares. Rest from weariness. Rest from our business. Hallelujah. I remember the psalmist saying, Be still, my soul. The Lord is on your side. Hallelujah. And number six, strength and gladness are in his presence. First Chronicles 16:27. Okay, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Amen. Strength and gladness are in his place. God in his presence will give us strength. How many times we feel weak, feel like we can't hardly go on, feel like the load is too heavy. But just being in the presence of the Lord, he renew your strength. He tell you you can make it. Huh? He lift you up like the wings of an eagle. He carry you when you can't carry yourself. Hallelujah. You got to try it. You got to try Jesus. We got to stop being so busy. Hallelujah, and take time. Like the song said, take time to be holy. And see, all these things that this song had, had, had mentioned about um, while the world is rushing on and everybody don't have time and no time and, and you got to do things quick now and in a hurry, he says, spend much time in the, with the Lord alone. I asked my husband, I said, honey, how many days was it that Moses spent in the presence of the Lord before uh, he, he started taking the people over? And he, I thought, it would, he, I said, now Noah went 40 years. I know when he came back, he had a, a hair full of white hair. 
but it was 40 days. And I said, 40 days in the presence of the Lord? And we can't spend 60 minutes? That's an hour. Forty days? Man, I'd be thinking I'm doing good if I spend two hours. And occasionally I can reach three. But this man, 40 days. And when he came out, he, his face was so shiny, people couldn't look on him. Man, what glory. I sure like to know what the Lord talked to him about for 40 days. But he had to be in the presence of the Lord to get the instructions because God had called to him to deliver the people out of Israel. It was a grave responsibility. He was one man with a million people going to a foreign land. And you know, in the midst of that, God instructed uh, Moses how and where to go and to protect the people from getting into warfare. But just think if he cut those, that time short, he wouldn't have got those instructions. My God, presence of the Lord is important. And let's look at verse 1627, uh, Psalm 1611. Lord, this, Lord, this has helped me, I'm telling you. Psalm 1611, you shall show me the path of life, and your presence is fullness of joy. On your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Those things that we desire, long for, seem like there's no way it's going to happen. In his presence, though, there's fullness of joy. And all those things, God said, they're on his right hand. And then he said in, in his word, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all these desires, all these pleasures shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In his presence, God only want to do his good. Hallelujah. So saints, I don't know about you, but we got to refocus. We got to prioritize our life and seek out what is most valuable. Thank you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. If you heard somebody say, if you don't have no joy, you don't have no strength. So you know that tells me that we need to get in the presence of the Lord so we can get some strength. And then when we get the strength, we need to rehearse what God has done for us so we can maintain our joy. Holly, what he brought us through, how he brought us out. Hallelujah. When the way was dark and you couldn't see no way. Hallelujah. He opened up a way for you. Glory to God. When you were hungry, didn't know where your next meal was coming from. God sent food to your house. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, glory to when you're sick. Hallelujah, glory to God. Didn't know if he was going to make it. 
but the mercy of the Lord. We can rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is a good God. His presence is great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then when you're in the presence of the Lord, Jesus said, I want my people. This was the last thing I think he gave me. Jesus want his people to know his will. I said, Jesus want his people to know his will. Not just his will for you. Or not just their call, but God's will. And, and we seek God. We seek God for his purpose for our life. Nothing wrong with that. We seek God for his will, for what he wants us to do. But we don't seek God for his will. What is his mind? What he want to happen in my life? What he want to happen in your city? What he want to happen in your nation? What he want to happen overseas? His will. Which takes me to this, this point about prayer. I, I heard a teaching from Miles Monroe. In fact, Lamont shared it with me. It touched me so, in such a way it impacted me. And uh, the, the topic of it was, why did God allow Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit? Why? Man, when he finished explaining that thing, I was so fired up in my spirit, and I still am. We know that prayer is communion with God, and it's not a one-sided conversation. It is not always about you, what you want and need for him to do for you. Prayer is an earthly license for a heavenly influence. Nothing is going to happen if man don't pray. And God can't do nothing if we don't pray. Amen. Prayer is not a religious act. It is a legal activity. It's a legal activity. I'm going to explain it. Prayer is giving God permission for we are God's access in the earth. We get that. We are God's access in the earth. God cannot do nothing in the earth with us, without us. That's, that sounds kind of weird, don't it? That's kind of sound a little far out there, right? It makes sense. And I'm going to tell you why. Nothing can happen on earth without man praying. The word says man should always pray and not think. If we stop our petition, God's heaven was shut down. Hard to believe, right? I mean, ponder it. Consider that even the birth of the church began with prayer. The birth of the church began with prayer. Now, I want to just share what he said about prayer. It said, in order to understand Okay. Most 
people misunderstand the kingdom concept of prayer, it is the most important activity in the earth. There's a principle of petitioning. It's a kingdom principle. And we have to understand it as prayer is spiritual and it's not a religious activity. Prayer has to be a partnership between heaven and earth. It is an earthly license for heavenly influence. Prayer is not an option for a believer, but a necessity. It is a legal activity. The power of the human is the most powerful creature on earth is man. God gave legal authority to humans. Now I'm going to show you why that's important. Turn to Genesis 1.26. Man, this thing blew me out the water. Because sometimes we negate Prayer. Oftentimes we do. Oftentimes we leave it to chance or we wait till we are in some kind of trouble and we call on the Lord. Okay. Remember when God created the, the earth and and he put the trees and everything in the garden. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters are bounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. Now, God was able to do and intervene at this point because he was the creator. Okay? Something changed. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us, this, I want you to listen here real close. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. But this is, the, this is the legality here on our part. Let them, he didn't say let us. You see that? He said let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God gave man dominion. You see that? He gave us dominion. I'm going to give you the... Dominion means to subdue the earth and have dominion over every living thing is to control these things so they fulfill the will of God. As to serve the purpose of his children, so doing includes gaining mastery over our own bodies. In Hebrew, the conjugation of rada, another form of uh, the Hebrew language, defines this word as to tread, dominion, to tread, to rule, have dominion, dominate. Amen? So God decreed, he made a law and said, 
they shall have dominion. That's where the legality came in. So God will not do anything without man on the earth. Because he gave man dominion. He didn't include us. He only gave it to them. That thing blew me out the water. I said, thank you, Jesus. But then he said, legal authority to dominate earth was given to humans. God didn't include himself in, in this legal authority. God will not violate his own law or word. Man became a legal steward on earth. We are the sovereign rule in the earth. We are. We live beneath our privilege because we don't know who we are. You know, when I start reading this thing, I, I said, well, look, this one, let me check this in the Word. And I began to go back here and... Uh, I saw that this was true. It was true. Under um, kingdom dynamics in my Bible, it said man is distinct from the rest of creation. The divine triune council determined that man was to have God's image and likeness. Man is a spiritual being who is not only body. This is the good part. When God created man, he created him out of the what? The dirt. Created him from dirt. It was red dirt. That's why they say Adam, because he was from the red clay, a red dirt. Okay? But humus, which means dirt, it was where human came from. Humans is the Greek word for, I mean, the Hebrew word for dirt. Now, the dirt was man's physical body. Then God breathed in man the breath of life, and man became a spiritual soul. Okay? So, when God made man's uh, body from the dirt and his spirit. He called, they called them humus man. But through uh, the change of language and etymology, they dropped the syllable and they said human instead of humus man. They said, human. Okay. Now, this is a good part. Only spirits in a physical body is legal on earth. Only Spirits in our physical body is legal on earth. Only spirits without a dirt body, any spirit without a dirt body is illegal. Satan is illegal. Demons are illegal on the earth. God himself is illegal because he don't have a body. His spirit. So he can't violate his word. He will not violate his law. My God, my God. Hallelujah. And Satan knew it. Satan became legal because he asked permission from the servant, serpent to take over his body. And he became legal. That thing blew me away. And then, of course, when God judged the serpent, he cursed the serpent, didn't he? 
And then he proclaimed that the woman that the serpent deceived, that she would have a uh, curse his heel, crush his head, amen, and he would strike his seal, his heel, right? So God, in his sovereignty, through 14 generations, had to make himself legal. Woo, glory. Had to make himself legal through the incarnation. You know what incarnation means? Carnal, which is the dirt, and the spirit, which is the son. Jesus was son of God and son of man. You talking body and spirit. Powerful thing. So when the when the God man came, the devil didn't know what to do with it. Because now God was legal. God went to the grave, stripped the devil of the keys of death, hell, and the grave. My God, my God. He was legal because he had a spirit. And he had the body of his son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's powerful. So now you understand why we have authority and dominion. And why God needs us. We intrinsic value to God. Every one of us. Every one of us. is an important person to God. That's why when you sick, God will heal you because he needs your body. Yeah. Hallelujah. He needs us to operate in the earth. But with this information, we need to understand how important the presence of the Lord is. How important it is for us to commune with God. That God can fulfill his will, not our will. Jesus said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Even the Holy Spirit couldn't stay because he was illegal. He couldn't, he didn't become legal until the church was birth. Even though he was an administrator. When the church was birth and people got filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When people get filled with the Holy Ghost, they have power and dominion. The most powerful weapon you possess on earth and I possess is not our spirit. It's our body. Amen. The spirit never die. It's your body that die. Yeah. When your body die, the word says absent from the body is present with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Your work is over. Yeah. 
Your use is over. You go to be with the Lord. I tell you, this word of God is so powerful it made me want to go back and really seek the Lord. So when you're wrestling with something, know that we have access with God. God. It's in partnership. So we get instructions from God from being in his presence. He'll tell us what to do. He'll give us and let us know what we're discerning and how to deal with it. But the thing is this. We have to discipline ourselves to hear God and take a minute when you go in this present, when you go in prayer, just take a few minutes and just be still. I guarantee you. And then and when the presence of God comes, you're going to start repenting. And after your vessel get clean, God is going to start talking. He will start talking. And then sometimes the prayer and the presence can just be sitting in a chair meditating. Sometimes you could be in the bathtub. You know, but whatever, wherever you can get that quiet time with the Lord. And allow him to minister to your spirit. He said he want to give us peace. Favor. Rest, instruction, strength, and joy, and wisdom. Let's take time to be holy. And let's speak often with the Lord. God bless you. I'm done.